In Pal World, there are going to be variations to all of the individual stats that the pals that you catch are going to be having. Whether you want to call these IVs, individual values, inherit values, or the game's eternal code, talent values, we're going to be talking about those today. In today's video, I have a lot of things to go over. Hey, um, did you, did you make an intro? No, I, I didn't really have time to make one. I, this kind of took a while. Hey, the only reason I'm shouting you out and trying to get you subscribers is is because people love it when you do random intros. Uh, all right, but I didn't have time to. Dude, I'm do you, you know have any I'm idea how much work Trump. went into Dude, breeding to, all of these make pals? Videos too. <laughs> Listen, I have stuff to do, you have stuff to do. When Pokemon's Day comes around, you can sit in their chair and you could do the plays, but until then, I'm doing the gaming, okay? This guy Yesterday, I put out a video after breeding 176 instances of two different groups of pals and posting my studies on that. And there were two different types of comments that I want to talk about. One, which is a few comments that said I was wrong and had absolutely no evidence or statistics to prove me that I was wrong, just that, quote, they were shitting out a whole bunch of eggs. And two, all the people who asked about IVs. Now, the term IVs, inherit values, individual values, and many similar things, is a term coined from the Pokemon community and the individual stats that a Pokemon would have. In this game, the internal values are called talent. Talent values really sucks to say, so I'm going to call them IVs because that just rolls off of the tongue a lot easier. There are four values that are going to be changing between every single pal that you capture. An HP value, a melee attack, a long range attack, and a defense value. These different values are absolutely invisible to the player, but there are many different calculators that you can find online who can tell you how to calculate these exact numbers. Every single one of these values can be as little as zero but as much as 100. I found that anytime that I'll have two or three of the four traits being as little as 20, 30, 40, I'll typically have the fourth or third in some occasions value being significantly higher, like 80 or 90. So it's not going to be common for you to find a pal who has all four stats being very poor. In fact, when averaging all of the pals that I have, it's very common for the average of these four numbers between zero and 100 to be in the mid 20s to mid 50s. However, alpha pals and lucky pals that you've encountered in the wild typically have higher values. I have yet to find any lucky or alpha pal that I have captured who has a value less than 50. The averages between all of these that I've run the tests on are between the mid 60s to the mid to high 90s. The highest one that I've captured is this Necromus who has a 100 in HP, a 98 in attack, an 84 in long range attack, and a 97 in defense. It is possible, yet statistically improbable, for you to ever find a pal with a zero IV in every single category, as much as it's impossible for you to find a pal with 100 in every single category. In addition, it's kind of impossible for you to breed a perfect IV pal, there are always going to be trade-offs because of how inheriting IVs is going to be done. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Right over here, I have four test chickpeas. One of them has a zero in every single stat, and one of them has a 100 in every single stat. And you're going to notice at level one, there's pretty much no difference between them because, well, they never had a chance to grow up yet. However, once we look at them at level, I tried to get them to 50, but I just ended up at 48. Once we get them to level 48, you're gonna notice that the HP value of a zero pal is at 2,180, and a 100 value is 2,612. Likewise, the attack stat is 316, and on a 100, it's 380. On a defense stat, it's 266, and 330. So the difference in HP is going to be a value of about 20%, attack is about 20%, and defense is about 24%. Depending on the specific species of pal that you are going to be finding out in the wild, those numbers are going to be fluctuating. It's never really going to be higher than 30% ever possible. Some people were saying they get an HP buff of 50%. That's just wrong. It's never going to be higher than 30%. Plus, you're never going to be finding a pal with zeros. Chances are you're going to be finding a pals with 
20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s. So that overall reach being 20% is gonna be closer to 10%. Now there are many passive skills that are going to be increasing the attack and defense of various pals. None of them are actually gonna be modifying the HP though, so that's just sort of a fixed value as it is. And considering you're only gonna be seeing at most a 30% increase in attack, well, you can get that from one trait. So by definition, it's far more important for you to be breeding pals with better traits than pals with better individual values. Unlike another creature catching game that you may know me for, that is not the most important thing. It's not IVs and then everything else. Instead, in this game, it's everything else and then IVs. Except for the pal souls, that's that's very, very last. In fact, you know what? I'm just gonna not talk about enhancing pals and pal souls because that's not even related to IVs. That's just gonna be another bonus on top of IVs. I wanna take some time going over how individual values are inherited from parents while breeding. I decided to run two tests on this because one wasn't good enough. I took a whole bunch of Cadavas. There's two in here that are labeled as the parents. Here we go. Here's mom and dad. I took their individual values, not by using a calculator, but by using pal edit, which allows me to view the exact programming information of the pals. So here I have Cadava mom and Cadava dad. I have the attack IV percentage of melee and ranged, the defense IV, and the HP IV of both of these pals. I then bred four Catavas and I realized that there was some wild inconsistency, so I did 46 more, and I made notes on all of them. Then to be extra thorough, I did a completely separate test with Gobfin. Here is a female Gobfin and a male Gobfin that I decided to breed all of these down 50 times and make notes on them. And holy shit, I absolutely hate the sound that this fun guy makes when it walks around. It makes this horrible slooshing sound. You know what? All water sounds in this game are the absolute worst. Oh my god. Why do you have to slosh around like that? The worst part is, I haven't found a good replacement for you yet. Cause Suzaku Aqua just keeps getting stuck on stuff. Maybe, maybe after the update, it doesn't get stuck on stuff. I don't know. Here are the stats of the male and female Cataba that I did the testing with. And here are all of their numbers going all the way down. There's something unique that every single offspring has two different attack value for melee and for long range. However, they're always equal. So that's the reason you're only seeing one attack value here. And the interesting part is, at no point did one or 79 ever show up, but 75 and 96 did a lot. When we look at the Gobfin test over here, here is attack value number one and attack value number two and attack value number one, the melee attack, never ever showed up, only the long range attack. So I guess the melee attack value just never ever passes down. This 49 and 91 never ever shows up. Whenever you're breeding wild pals, their melee attack value never ever passes down, only the long range attack. So let's look at the HP stat over here. Out of the 50 of them that I bred down, 44% had a value of 77 for HP, and 28% of them had 21 as a value for HP. The rest were two or 4% of random various numbers. For the attack value, 54% of the time we had one of the parents' values, 14% of the time we had a different parents' value. For defense, 24% of the time we had a parents' value, 18% of the time we had another parents' value. Strangely enough, we had a lot of 4% on this one, including two of them had a perfect stat in defense. Looking at the 50 Gobfin that I bred down, we're looking at 38% and 32% had an HP stat, 30 and 28% had an attack stat, 32 and 22% had a defense stat. Let's draw conclusions from these numbers. Down here is all of set number one, up here is all set number two, where we could see the HP values that passed down were 38, 32, 44, and 28%. The times that a random mutation of a value showed up was 30 and 28%. For attack, we had similar numbers at 30 and 28%, 54 and 14%, which seems like kind of an extreme. However, the mutations were still 
32 percent 33 and 22 percent for the defense value 24 and 18 percent for the defense value of the other test in my previous video people got mad when i used rounding language so i'm no longer going to use rounding language I then came up with the averages, minimums, and maximums of all of the different values between all of the tests, and here are my results. Strikingly, the average that a parent's trait would pass down to an offspring was exactly 30% out of all of the different tests and all of the different values. Out of the attack, HP, and defense stat between both individual tests that were ran, it equaled, on average, 30% exactly. The minimum value that we saw between one test was 22, the minimum value on another test was 14, the maximum values were 38 and 54, but once again, the average is exactly 30%. What can we draw from these conclusions? If you were to breed down parents, there is a 30% chance that it's going to be having a value from one of the parents, and there is a 70% chance that it is going to have a random number not associated with either of the parents. There was a statement going around that it was going to be an average of the two parents individual values, that information is 100% false. At no point did a HP1 and HP2 IV stat average out to a number that showed up at any sort of pattern. And why 4% of the time in one of the tests we got a mutation of 100%, I don't know. It's just a random number that happened. Someone might say that, oh, the reason that that number showed up for defense is because both of the values were so low. No, they were 47 and 62. And in this test, the values were 56 and 6. So you think that there would be a higher likelihood of larger numbers, but there wasn't really a higher likelihood of larger numbers. There was just a less consistent passing down of numbers. Okay, well, what about the 75 and 96? These are higher numbers. Is there a higher likelihood? Nope, absolutely not. This test, now granted, 100 is a limited sample size. If you want to run this information with 1,000 eggs or 2,500 eggs through the course of 10 different parents and submit that information, that'd be fantastic. But until then, in this sample size, the fact that we're looking at a complete average of every single thing being 30%, that would be a very strange coincidence. Austin, the video is getting a little long and I know you love your viewer retention time, but you're not even monetized and there's people with Xbox Game Pass watching and those aren't patient people. We need to get to the conclusion. What is the best way to have the best IVs on the best pals with the best traits? Give us a damn answer already. All right. Fine. A lot of comments in my last video were asking if it's better to have both sets of parents with all four traits that you want, or what I recommended, which is to have two parents with two traits each. After my last round of 50 Godfin eggs, I then did another test of 50 Godfin eggs, both parents having all four desired traits. And while I only did 50 eggs, and that's not a very large sample size, I only had four offspring who had the desired results. As opposed to my previous testing, where if one parent has two traits and another parent has two traits, you're looking at 66% chance to pass down the traits, 66.67% to the power of four, we're looking at a 20% chance to have all four traits as opposed to one parent with four traits and another parent with four traits you're looking at a 6.25 percent chance to have all four traits the reason i'm harping on this exact number right here is because now there's another variable that you're introducing which is a 30 percent chance to pass down the three desired traits 30 percent to the power of three is 2.7 percent and when multiplying that by the chance to get all four desired traits you're looking at one out of 188 eggs will have the desired traits and IVs. Now, that's not, that's not saying perfect IVs, I'm just saying the three IVs you currently want. Parent one with traits A and B, and parent two with traits C and D, one out of 188 eggs. That same 2.7% times 6.25%, you are now looking at one out of 593 eggs for you to have the desired traits on the desired pal with the desired IVs. Parent one with A, B, C, D, and parent two with A, B, C, D. So when looking at parent one A, B, and two C, D, let's actually put that into terms now, we're looking at a male with runner and nimble and a female with legend and sprinter. You're then going to be breeding that male and that female, let's say 100 eggs. And you have a 20% chance to get pals that have 
all four of these traits. And they may pass down the stats, you may get random mutations of stats at 70% and you might get something better. But you might also get another male who's a runner and nimble, or a female who's a legend and sprinter who has better stats, and then you can swap them in. Read down better stats and hope for the best. Unfortunately, there's not a good or solid strategy that's just swap one out, keep going, swap one out, keep going, and you might get lucky along the way. You might get the one out of 188, you might get a one out of 188 chance for you to get the desired pal with the desired traits. If your base is just going to be this pumping out while you go on your adventure, awesome. It's nice passive experience. You're gonna be having plenty of slots for pals to make all of the supplies for cake, and you're going to be able to get yourself a fantastic pal with fantastic IVs. I never intended my time playing Pal World on Austin John Gaming to be about genetics, but here we are, and I hope you found this helpful. If you did, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button. I need more subscribers. We're at 20K, I'm still not monetized. I have volunteered my time for all of this information. Thank you so much for being here. If you watched an advertisement on this video, Google made money, but I didn't. And, and for that, just do me a favor, hit the like button. Thank you so much for being here. Until next time, Austin John Gaming out.